Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in today's video, we're going to talk about precisely aligning a mesh to a coordinate system in Fusion. Now, this is something that I've talked about in the past on how to do this in Fusion. We've talked about how to do it in Quick Surface. We've even done this in XScan for Einstar scanners. But recently, when Fusion did their update, they had the Mesh Align tool, which I talked about how it worked and that I wasn't really thinking it was a very good tool or it didn't do everything we wanted to. Um, and I watched a video from Brad Tallis and I'll put a link to his video in the description on his impressions of the mesh tool and his workflow to get it aligned. Um, and while him and I disagree on it, I, I, again, I'll put a link to his video. You should definitely check it out and um, you know take a look at his tips and tools because he has a different perspective or point of view on um, how to use that tool. But what it kind of made me think of is how would I do this if I did not have access to Quick Surface or other tools and I just had Fusion? What is the most accurate way that I can think to align a mesh in Fusion? So even though we've covered this a couple of different times, we're going to do it again. And I'm going to talk about the workflow, all the extra extraneous steps that we have to go through to get it aligned. Uh, so the first step is obviously getting a mesh. Uh, this, I will put a link in the description to um, a Fusion file that has this mesh inserted. So if you want to follow along, I'll leave it in this sort of state where it's kind of askew and you can follow along with that. But really the first thing that we need to understand is that we have a body and tools like Move, Copy and Align work differently with prismatic parts that are B-reps or solid bodies than they do with mesh bodies. So we have to do a couple of extra steps. The first step is to convert this to a component by right-clicking. Then we're going to right-click and unground it from parent so it's free to move about. Now we have a bodies folder and we have an origin relative to that body in this component. Now this origin is the same one as the top level of our design. However, if we just move this mesh around, the origin for that component goes with it. Now this is important because we can't really change this very well with the mesh relative to its own coordinate system in the component. So our, our overall workflow is gonna to be to align this part to this coordinate system, then copy and paste the mesh back into the top level of the design. It's a, again, it's a messy workaround, but this is the most efficient way or the, the most accurate way, I should say, that I know how to do it. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure we activate our component and then we're going to go into mesh direct edit, select our mesh body and say, okay. Now the reason that we're doing this is because now we can construct a plane at three points and we can pick three points across a face, for example, the top of the sprocket. Now this scan was one that we did with the Metro X. So uh, we did a video and we talked about that process in the Metro X. Uh, so if you're wondering where the scan came from, that's what this was. It was uh, uh, a sprocket for my GPZ project. Um, and you know, basically that, that's what the scan is. So now that we've got a plane, this plane is representative of an average of three selections across the top face of our part. You'll notice that as we hover over this, it's a little bit low here. We can see some of the mesh is high and it's a little bit high here. We can see that. So we can go into our construction, we can hide that. We can try to create another one at three points and we can pick, you know, again, three different points. Again, an average representation. We'll say, okay, we can uh, actually resize this a bit. Go ahead and resize it down here as well. And we can see that, again, it's a little bit high in the center, a little bit low on the sides, but we can play around with this and we can get a plane that's a good average representation. We don't have a color bar like we do in something like Quick Surface where it'll tell us exactly what the sort of tolerance is from the mesh to the plane that we're creating. But this is a good way that we can get a plane relative to those selections. The downside to using something like Mesh Align is that we can only select one of these triangles and we have to just assume that triangle is actually planar with the rest of the part. The problem is that's, that's almost never true. The triangles are gonna vary. They're gonna be a small angle between each triangle and it's never gonna be truly flat. So we need to have an average. Once we have this, we can finish direct editing. We can create a mesh section sketch of the mesh body using the plane we just created. 
And then once we have that sketch, we can right click and edit, and we can go to create and fit curves to mesh section. So we wanna make sure we're on the circle tool, select a circle, and you can see the max curve deviation is pretty large here, 1.9 millimeters. And that's basically because we are building this based on a, an edge, a rounded edge on this mesh. Now, if we were to take the mesh section sketch down further, a little bit lower in this part, we would probably get a more accurate circle. But for the purposes of what we're doing, this works fine. Just note that um, the mesh references are going to be extremely important. All right, so now that we've got this, our mesh section sketch, we're going to finish the sketch. And remember that we've got a plane in our component, and we've got a plane at the top level. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be aligning this part, the, the entire component, with this plane to the top plane in our design. So I'm going to go back to the top level. I'm going to go to my solid tools, modify, and align. So now we're gonna make sure that the object is set to component. This plane is in this component. So as soon as I select this plane, the entire component is included. This means our mesh section sketch is included. And then we select where we want it to go to. We'll say that plane there, we'll capture its position and we'll say, okay. So now if we look at this from the back or uh, the top, what we can see is that we've aligned based on our average relative plane that we created. The next thing that we need to do is we need to get the entire component from this center circle that we did in our mesh section sketch to the origin. So once again, we're gonna take the entire component, we're gonna use move copy, and we're gonna go from point to point. So we're gonna select the point that's at the center of our mesh section sketch, so our origin point is here, and our target point is the origin this is on the origin of the top level of our design again, remember that. We're gonna capture the position and we're gonna say, okay. So I'm gonna hide the sketch for now. I'm gonna hide the plane for now. And I'm gonna show the origin in our component. So this is the original alignment of our mesh as it's inserted. You can see that it's off, at, it's off angle, it's away from the origin. And now the entire component is positioned properly based on our average plane and our mesh section sketch relative to the top level origin. So now all we need to do is select our edited sprocket. We're gonna do a control C for copy. The top level is currently active. So if we do control V, what it's gonna do is it's gonna make a copy of that in the top level of our design. We can say, okay. And now what we really need to do is we can hide, get rid of, remove the entire component. And what we're left with is just a single mesh body at the top level of our design that is positioned relative to the coordinate system. So once again, it took a lot of extra steps, but having the ability to put a mesh body into a component, so that way not only the mesh itself will move, but any sketches or planes or other geometry that we create will actually move with it. And at the very end, we'll just copy and paste it back into the top level of our design. So that way it is perfectly aligned to our coordinate system. At this point, we can continue to make mesh section sketches. For example, we can use this as our top plane. We can pull it down. And now we've got a mesh section sketch that we can edit. We can go to create, fit curves. We can select this circular reference. And now you can see we're at 2.4 times 10 to the negative two. So 0 0.002 millimeter is now our max curve deviation where at that upper edge, that first selection, it was kind of off. So just using that to our advantage to build out the geometry and being able to put this into a position where now we've got perfect references for those circular edges within a, a pretty small tolerance, 0 0.002. And we know that it's aligned to our coordinate system. We now have a great starting point for reverse engineering this part. Um, once again, if you wanna try this on your own, the link in the description will have this mesh inserted into it at that sort of skewed angle. And I'll also leave a link to Brad's video if you wanna see how he reviewed the mesh align command. And then, Hopefully you can take what Brad did and what I've shown you here and my review of the mesh align command, and then make your own decisions on how you can set up your mesh parts in your design. So if you have any questions on this, please let me know.
As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.